All right, guys, so we need to clear the air on this front suspension we put together. We appreciate your comments and concerns for our safety, but uh, the suspension is not binding like you think it is. So we hate to spoil the surprise for you, but we actually have about an hour of runtime on this go-kart, and the front suspension has loosened up significantly. It's because these joints we're using were brand new and they were stiff and they are heim joints. They may be labeled as tractor parts, but if you look up the definition of a heim joint, it's what it is. So these are the same style heim joints we used on our build. And just to show you how, how stiff they are, stiff they are. Yep, great idea. I put a couple in the vise. And that's just one of them. We have six of those things on each side. They're tight. They are so freaking tight. So that's why we are having problems with sus uh, our suspension travel binding. It's brand new joints. And the ones on our cart that we've been riding for a little over an hour, so much more free after we got some miles on it, they're working really good. If we had built the front suspension like the rear using a regular bushing, it would be a huge problem. You would be correct. But because we use these tractor joints, they're basically heim joints. They're just labeled as tractor links. It's fine. They're able to rotate. They can actually pivot and rotate, which is what they're doing. Perfect. So this suspension is not perfect by any means, but it's our first attempt at an independent front suspension and it is not nearly as dangerous as some of you think it is. So at the end of this video, we're gonna go more in depth and break out our chassis design book and talk more about the elements of this front suspension uh, and put your minds at ease. Anyway, enjoy the regularly scheduled program. What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And we are Cars and Cameras and we are working on the cross cart outside today because the garage is currently a paint booth nuclear wasteland. You can't even breathe in there right now. <laughs> a little tough. Uh, but anyway, last time we built the upper and lower control arms and the spindles for the front end of our CB750 cross cart and now it's time to mount front and rear shocks. So Ike, tell us what we got, man. Well, we have some Go Power Sport shocks. I'm gonna try to mount on the front. We might have to double them up. This thing might be a little heavier than anticipated. Yes. So we're gonna start with one shock. We might have to double up. That sounds good to me. The rear, I'm gonna try to use the rear shocks off the CB750. Recycling. I think it'll work. So we had to bring the lower control arms in to match the steering rack, the pivot on the inner tie rod ends. Wanted those to match the lower control arms. So I wanted to bring the upper control arms out a little bit so it'll help with the camber while the suspension is doing its job. Uh, I like to have the lower part of the tires poke out a little bit at full compression and full release. Let's see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna fish mouth two pieces of flat bar, one at about seven and a half inches, and the other at just under eight inches so we can mount a uh, shock mount. Sweet. And if anyone's asking, that smoke is from the, uh... The lube. The lube. I'm hoping that, uh, the spring is gonna be stiff enough for this amount of angle. So now that I have these upper mounts cut, I'm gonna drill some holes in them. Three holes drilled. Good enough for me. So all I have to do is weld this up and we'll be good to go. So while Ike has been working on the front shock mounts, I've been working on the rear shock mounts. So the way the original rear shock mounts is different than the Go Power Sports one. So I'm basically making, assembling a bushing from scratch. I had to run out to the store and grab this, uh, this pipe and I actually had to drill it out a little bit so that our bolt would slide into it. So I'm gonna cut a piece to fit in between this shock. Then I went to the auto parts store and got some fuel line and also this hose because this hose seemed to fit better. That's going to slide over this pipe and then I'm going to have a third pipe slide over the hose. And that's going to be our bushing and lower shock mount for the rear. All right, so my rear shock bushings are almost done down here. Ike is going to go ahead and tack weld the front shocks.
Ike also fitted our Go Power Sports rack and pinion steering kit up, and he's going to go ahead and tack that too. So this means we can put the front wheels on it and the front is a roller. Kind of. Other than steering. We need to do the hook up the steering because if we put the front wheels on and it's go to roll it, the wheels are going to fold up. And if we put it on the ground right now, again, the wheels are going to turn when we okay. set it down. So, so like we're to, close. Yeah. yeah, we're close. I'd like to go ahead and cut the, the uh, steering uh, tie rod ends. Tie rod ends. Well, the center link yeah and lengthen it a little bit and put it back together sounds good yeah we're almost there is put this together and you've already done the other side I've so already done the other side. we should have steering yeah well i mean not you know we don't have a wheel and a column but wheels should stay together if we were to push it yes meanwhile i'm still wish working on bushings well i figured out that we have a problem with our front suspension and that's that it is severely undersprung. So we have two more of those uh, shocks on another go-kart on the Yerftog GY6 that we're going to rob and we're just going to double them up because right now it's just not stiff enough to even hold the own the go-kart up. I was afraid of that. But... Yeah I mean this is our first time with suspension like this so you know it's trial and error. I was and, hopeful. Yeah uh, the first time is an error like you know I think that's to be expected. While Ike is brainstorming here, I went out and picked up a four by eight piece of sheet metal, 14 gauge, and that is what we are gonna cut out for the floor. Got a floor pan, dude. Sweet. So all three of our skid plates have been cut out. We can tack them in, but first Ike is going to tack some rear shock mounts. Like we said, we had to do a redesign uh, because the motorcycle shocks were not going to be strong enough. So we're using Miata suspension and well, it's gonna have tail fins. Maybe. Maybe. I think it should. All right, so I just welded in our three skid plates. I was welding up our suspension mounts on the front, but then the welder started acting kind of funny. So I'm gonna take a break on that. We're gonna check up on what Ike is doing. He is working on the rear suspension still, specifically cutting some pipe. And we're gonna brace the rear suspension up there in two places so we can have a good place to mount a fuel tank to. Remember when Go Power Sports said they had a bigger and better brake rotor for us on the way? They came through. This thing is huge and it is pretty. See what I mean? It's acting up.
So this rear suspension setup will probably be a little bit stiff, but we can always change out the spring rate if it doesn't work out because these are the shocks for the front of a Miata. So like it's designed to carry what, maybe 1500 pounds, 1200 pounds, something like that. And we're gonna have maybe 500 on the rear of this. Yeah, I did not save the rears, but it'll be fine. We were really hoping to have a roller by the end of this video, but it just did not work out with the amount of time that we have to film each of our videos. Uh, but we put the floors in it, we got the steering in, uh, we got the front sort of halfway worked out, we got the rear figured out, and uh, we're, we're, we're right there, dude. Like, just, you know, a few more hours of fooling with the front, a small redesign, and we're gonna have a roller. So check that out next time uh, on our cross cart build. Hope you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. Uh, and subscribe to Cars and Cameras for more future updates on this thing. And check us out in between videos on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. Pick up a shirt at cars-cameras.com, help support the channel and our future builds. Oh, also, we have some kind of sad news. Leroy the Rooster passed away, probably passed away, we haven't found a body, uh, wow, two days ago. Wow, you just get graphic, aren't you? Well, I mean, uh, we found two of the hens outside the pen, and one of them was, was in their pen last night when we got home to put them away. And there was no, uh, there was no sign of Leroy the Rooster, um, who Ike has had multiple run-ins with. Um, it wasn't me. We've had a raccoon running around, eating cat food and bird food and stuff. So I'm guessing he just got a taste for chicken or something. Um, but I'd like to think he's out there in the woods, like with half his feathers and a peg leg and an eye patch, wearing a coonskin cap. He's just exiled like Rambo. But anyway, kind of a bummer, but it happens. Anyway, have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. What you got, buddy? All right, welcome to Chassis Design 101 with John and Isaac from Cars and Cameras. All right, so what we have put together is unequal length double A-arm suspension. Let's read it. The use of a longer lower A-arm and a shorter upper A-arm provide a suspension geometry that causes the tires and wheels to gain negative camber as the suspension compresses. The advantage of this gain in a negative camber is the camber angle between the outside tire and the ground will not change too much in relation to the ground during body roll. So to simplify that, as we go around a corner, as we have body roll, uh, we'll gain negative camber to keep the same amount of contact patch on the ground. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Perfect sense, okay. dude. All right, and to be 100% fair, we're not perfect because a car's suspension design starts at the tires and wheels and moves inboard. The last thing that is designed is the frame. And that we did the exact opposite. We did the frame first, but we're doing the best we can. Knuckle design and ball joint heights. Since all the loads from the wheel and tire must be fed onto the chassis and control arms to the upper and lower ball joints, it is an advantage to place the ball joints as far apart as possible. It could be better on the front of ours. Well, uh, we were using small wheel diameter, hey, so we were true. trying to keep... It'll be fine. Small yeah. wheel diameter. The scrub radius is the distance from the ball joint line to the center line of the tire. There are significant handling and control advantages in reducing the scrub radius to the minimum. We probably could have done a better job with that, uh, but we could achieve that by putting a larger tire wheel on it and just with a wider tire and making the center line well, of the wheel further. Well, okay, forward. okay. In my defense, I didn't... I wanted the wheel to be... Uh, a little bit further uh, in, yeah. but let me point out why we didn't. It's because of the uh, tie rod mounts. In general, the upper control arm length will be between 50 and 80% of the length of the lower control arm. That's something we could have done a little better. Uh, we have 16 inches on the upper control arms and 18 inches on the lower. That means the difference, uh, the, that means that the upper control arm is 89% of the length of the lower control arm. So ideally, like I just said, it would have been between 50 and 80, but it's not within those parameters. And guess what? It handles pretty darn well. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't get into because it gets into movement of roll center. Um, and that really put a pretzel on my head. Swing arm lengths and camber gain caster angle, and then it gets into like computer stuff from the 90s, bump steer, um, how to adjust bump steer, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So like we probably mentioned earlier, if we mounted the front suspension like we did the rear suspension with just bushings, that would have been a huge problem. You would have been correct. We would have had suspension binding issues, but because we mounted it using heim joints, even though they're labeled as tractor joints, they really are heim joints, it's fine. It allows it to pivot without binding. The only 
binding or friction we have is because they're brand new. We wouldn't want to install hind joints if they were floppy right out of the box. Am I being too sassy? So if you have any other questions or concerns about our suspension design, let us know in the comments and we'll try to address it in a future episode. Knowing what you know now, should we still redesign the front suspension? I think it's okay. It drives okay, at least up until 60 miles an hour. Um, when the tire starts bouncing. Yeah, when, when, when we have a... Uh, when we have tire out of balance. Yeah, when we have tire out of balance. We will do a better job on our end explaining uh, the design elements of uh, our suspension builds from here on out because we just kind of assume that you would know uh, that these brand new Heim joints would be stiff. But I guess not, so we'll just do a better job explaining next time. Thank you for tuning into this episode, guys, and uh, thank you for your concern for our safety. Uh, I hope we cleared the air for you on this whole front suspension debacle. Uh, this thing is gonna be epic when it is done. We're still having engine problems, but like we got it up to 60 without too much difficulty. I don't want to spoil too much. You'll see real soon in an upcoming episode. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up, uh, buy a t-shirt at cars-cameras.com, and we will see you next time. What do you think? Is there anything else you think we need? That's it. I'm an expert now because I bought the book. I'm afraid that's what people are going to say. Oh, look, John went out and bought the book. You had that book already. Yeah, I bought this book in May, so joke's on you. Ah.